Police officers of Reddit. Who's the smartest criminal you've ever encountered? Part 3. Not a cop, and wouldn't call this the smartest thing ever, but it was pretty amusing and clever. A while back, there was a series of thefts along the bus lines in my country. People's things kept missing from one city to the next, and nobody had any idea what happened as things were presumably safe in the bottom of the bus which nobody except the driver had the access to. What happened? Apparently there were two guys, one of whom was really small. You get where this is going. The big guy would put the little guy in a suitcase, buy a ticket to somewhere, load him up with the rest of the luggage, and enjoy the ride, while the little guy went out, stole people's electronics, jewelry, cameras, and whatnot, then returned to his suitcase until the ride was over. Not really sure how they caught them, but it was pretty amusing to read about, and I found the whole thing clever enough. A French thief who spent 10 years in prison became a comedian when he got out. One of his stories. Finds a building, goes in, chooses a floor and transforms the exit door into an extra department. Puts the apartment number, fake lock, welcome rug, etc. Puts an iPhone for sale. The person comes to buy it. He opens the door and a shower robe and says give me one second, him just gonna count the money. And poof. He's gone from the exit stairs. There's a small tourist town where I grew up that is divided in half by a big river, the only way between the two sides is over a long bridge, unless you go all the way around another mountain pass. These guys called in, like, two to three bomb threats to a posh hotel on one side of the bridge. I think they even left some dummy packages. All the police went across the bridge to do crowd control, etc, etc. The guys then called in a bomb threat on the bridge. And started robbing stuff on the other side. The police couldn't be positive the bomb threat was real or not and hesitated long enough to give the thieves a head start. Mandatory not a police officer but. The story of the. Mumbai Opera House jeweler and heist. Probably belongs here. Sometime in 1987 a guy placed an ad in the newspaper, looking for recruits to the CBI, the investigative police agency in India. A bunch of people showed up. He rented an office to interview them. He selected 26 of the candidates told them to assemble the next day near a popular jewelry shop to practice a mock raid. He had a fake search warrant in all handy. Then he led these guys to conduct a raid on the jewelry shop. Together they collected all the jewelry in the shop, took all the cash, and then he asked the trainees to keep a watch on the shop employees while he deposited the stuff. He then walked out and disappeared. Took half an hour for someone to suspect something wrong and call the actual police. They never caught the guy. Never even found out who he was. The balls on that man. Worked at a jail. After getting off work, I watched an ex-inmate, homeless, being released. He walked over to a patrol car, looked me in the eye, and the elbowed the window in. He was walked back to the entrance and rebooked in. It was middle of January. He didn't want to get too cold. Edit, to the people talking about can't break car windows. That's true. Also depends on the car. The patrol car they used was specifically old model used more for the perimeter of the jail unless other patrol cars were in the shop. Those windows had been replaced so many times. I don't know if it's the same material or what. And for the ones asking for news links, come on guys, you really think the news reports small time things? Those aren't dramatic enough. I could probably find their charges and stuff in share, but I'm not gonna do that to this guy. He was a nice guy. Not a dick. I'm not gonna put him on blast just to prove anything to people for karma or anything along those lines. A couple of my friends from high school, they were brothers, stocked shelves slash worked in the back during the night. Right around when the PS4 was released, they mostly emptied a big bag of dog food and stuck two or three playstations in there, resealed it, and waited a few days to buy that bag from the back. Not a cop. We got called for a rollover car accident. We get there and the car is empty so we think he got ejected. My partner and I start looking for a body nearby. A few minutes later a cop tells us that they think the driver is a mile down the road walking. We go check on him and he tells us he's fine but he wasn't driving the car. He also didn't know who was driving the car, and he had clearly been drinking. During the ride to the ER, he told me that as long as the cops don't find you and in the car, the local DA won't pursue drug driving charges. All you had to do was get out of the car and walk away from it. There's one guy I recently dealt with who is on parole. I stopped him in my city after he was looking to buy drugs, usually people come from all over to buy drugs and then leave. I issue him a warning and let him go as it's pretty common and he sang like a bird regarding the people he was trying to buy from. Anyway, 
The next day, I got a call from his parole officer who says he was alerted the guy was pulled over and wanted to verify that it was his guy that I stopped. I'm a little confused at first but he goes on to say that the day before, he was scheduled to meet with him but he had an excuse and bailed. His excuse was that he was in the hospital. Well when he spoke with him the following day, he was able to provide documentation that he had entered the hospital day 1 and had left day 2. Well I had stopped him at 115 in the morning and after looking at the picture, it was 100% him. Turns out the guy had checked in then out of the hospital on day 1, then in and out again on day 2. He then rearranged half the paperwork to make it look like he was in the hospital overnight which would make my car stop of him appear like I mixed him up with someone else as well as give him a valid excuse to miss their meeting. Not sure what's gonna happen to the guy but I thought it was pretty clever. Heard a story from a co-worker. Guy was a POS and never got caught but he was apparently constantly pulling this sort of bullshit. What bullshit you ask? Well, he used to go tape cars for test drives. Only cars with full size spare tires. He'd go down a side road, get out and hide the tire off in nearby woods. Then return the car and go grab the tire. An interesting way to get four matching tires, winky face, just pick four different dealerships. And the dealerships would never even know something happened till they sold the car. At that point, it could be an issue where the factory forgot to install it and even if that was known not to be the case, how do you figure out which of the many people that test drove the car took the tire? Friend's older brother and friends used to rob cars. Never did it anywhere except for movie theaters, guaranteed those people aren't coming back out for two hours. They'd take their girlfriends, two guys, two girls, wait in their car, hanging out until they saw a car with too much money, usually booming bass and loud music, which guaranteed a few grand worth of stereo equipment. They'd wait until the driver went in, give it another 30 minutes just to be safe, all walk over together, and use a center punch to knock out the driver's window and push it into the seat in one piece. Immediately they'd open the doors, and cut the alarm wires if there was an alarm going off, and just start hanging out. Even if someone in the lot noticed the alarm, and turned to look, they just saw two guys and two girls near a car with the doors open, looking like the driver was a dumbass who forgot to shut off his alarm, which was confirmed when it went off in a few seconds. Then they'd proceed to just clean out the car. Usually amps, subs, speakers, etc. Right in broad daylight, with four of them it just looked like some guys working on their stereo. They'd close the doors and then leave. They did this for a year or two before eventually getting caught because a father was waiting for his kids to come out, and saw the entire process happen. They did some time. It was one of the smartest, stupidest things I'd ever heard about. A guy I went to high school had been stealing from Walmart in a pretty clever way. He would grab video games, mp3 players, near etc. And throw them away in a trash can in the garden section. The workers never checked the trash contents and he would just wait, sometimes 5 hours until they emptied the trash in the back dumpster and hop in to get his items. Once he took a cardboard box from a display inside, filled it with video games, a PS3, and extra controllers. He grabbed some tape and pens and drew all over the box and taped it up to make it look used and tossed it. An hour later he had a whole new PS3 and stack of games. Couple guys came into my old work and stole a grand piano. We had a piano which was never played, so the boss decided to sell it off. Had arranged for a company to come lift the piano, and with a lot of people coming in and out of our work, the topic of the piano so someone obviously caught when the piano was moving. Come lifting date, a loot and vein came in and two guys in high vis vests got out and mentioned they were here for the piano. They took a good 15 minutes to get the piano out of the building and into the van, and even members of staff assisted with them. They jumped in the van and sped off. No one thought any different and didn't cite anything to say the piano had been handed over. About 40 minutes later, another Luton van turns up. Two guys get out and mention they're from the moving company and is here for the grand piano. A lot of confusion around work and laughs thinking someone was at the wind-up. Long story short, the guy who bought the piano never got his piano. Council officials in Newport are trying to discover who planted cannabis in flower pots put out to brighten up the city. More than 20 of the illegal plants were discovered nestling amongst begonias and petunias in the street flower displays. But by the time police were told and went to examine the specimens they had already been harvested. The council said it was checking CCTV footage to find the culprits. I had never seen cannabis growing in the wild before so it was crazy to see it, said local businessman Dean Bendis, who made the discovery. It's actually rather a beautiful plant and stood out wonderfully. But they have gone now. I don't know who took them. The leafy pot plants were growing an open view of passersby on some of the city's busiest streets. 
Newport counselor Reese Hutchings, also a member of the band Goldie Look and Chain, said he thought local teenagers were to blame. It's either kids or the Newport underworld community, I'm pretty sure it's not Alan Titchmarsh, he joked. But city council officials have taken a dim view of the green-fingered criminals. It's a serious issue and we will be informing the police and checking our CCTV cameras," said a spokesperson. Gwent police said the fact that the plants had now gone was problematic. Now that the plants have apparently disappeared it's difficult to determine whether they were in fact illegal cannabis plants or not and, if so, whether they had been deliberately planted for cultivation," said a spokesperson. Like, comment, subscribe, share, download, embed, save, dab, yeet. Have a great day fam.